Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, our State of the City address. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mayor of the City of Encinitas, Catherine Blakespear. Well, good evening, everybody. Who is excited to be here? I am excited to be here. I'm so thrilled to be here, actually, because it's cool and we're by the coast and we're not all in our, inside of our own homes sweating. Um, and it's a beautiful location and we're here at the Alila Morea. We're so grateful to be here. So I'm thrilled that so many of you could join us. This is a lot of people and I'm just really grateful that you're here. So thank you for coming to tonight's State of the City. So the theme for tonight is poised and ready. And what I mean by that is that we are poised for the future and ready to lead here in the city of Encinitas. So I believe that our city has been and will continue to take bold action to address the problems that confront us. So Encinitas is ready to lead on the challenges that confront every city, homelessness and mental illness, adapting to climate change, wildfire, drought, lack of housing affordability, aging infrastructure, the list could really go on and on. But all of our progress is done here in concert with our residents, our community, and our partners. And one really important partner that continues to help position Encinitas for the future is the Chamber of Commerce, our wonderful host for this evening. So I want to thank Sherry Yardley, the Chamber CEO, for your continued support, and all the board members. Thank you so much to the Chamber. We know that the vitality of the business community is critically interlinked to the vibrancy of our town. So I sincerely thank all of you who are running small businesses in this city and the three Main Street associations as well who are representing the businesses for everything you do to make Encinitas vital. I would also like to recognize that we are on Kumeyaay land here as we stand here in Encinitas today. I know we have a member of the Rin Rincon tribe here. I'm really grateful that Tishma was able to make it. And I want to recognize all the descendants of First Peoples who are here this evening. So thank you so much for coming. I also want to th thank you. I also want to recognize and thank Shannon Bradley, who's here from our Congressman Mike Levin's office. Where is she? She could wave. There you are. Thank you for coming. And we have Sulima Balderas, who's from our Assembly member Tasha Berner Horvath's office. If she's here, she can raise her hand. And we have Jack Cleary, representing, representing Senator Pat Bates' office. And we have an esteemed former Encinitas mayor, Teresa Arbayo Barth, right here in the back. Hello, to, in the middle. Thank you for coming, Teresa. We also have a number of school board candidates, and I'm not going to mention you by name, but I really want to thank you, all the elected officials from water boards and school boards who are here tonight. So thank you for coming. And then I'd like to recognize this evening's sponsors. So thank you to our event sponsor, Cox, right here in the front. And our table sponsors, AT&T. Where are you? There you are. Yes. The California Institute for Human Services. Our wonderful community partner, the Community Resource Center, the CRC, that does great work here in the city. We also have our visionary waste hauler, Edco. Where are they? Where's Edco? There, oh, yes. Thank you. We have a fantastic private school, the Grower School, with student leaders here. Thank you for coming. Fabulous school in our city. If anyone's looking for educational options, the Grower School right over there. Yes, thank you again. We have Miracosta College, our great community college here. Thank you. A good spirit in the house. Thank you. And then we have Cardiff 101, Encinitas 101, and Lucadia 101. So let's give a big round of applause to the main streets. 
And then I'm just going to recognize the amazing food we had tonight, the delicious food from all of these restaurants. So I'm, I'll say them all and we can clap at the end. So we have Good Anya, we have Urban Sea, Lazy Acres, La Papagayo, Maya's Cookies, Panikin Coffee and Tea, Mr. Peabody's, Pina, The Cottage Encinitas, The Roxy, Vaga, Versailles Cafe and Restaurant, and Yummy Cupcakes. So thank you for the food. And then the biggest thank you to the Alila Morea for hosting us. We love being here for the state of the city. Yes, it's great. It really elevates the level of this event and it suits our magnificence to have it here. So I'm really excited that we have a five-star hotel here on our coastline and that we are able to host this flagship event here at, at this hotel. So I'd like to recognize my council colleagues who I love to serve with. I've been so grateful to have been blessed by amazing council colleagues. We have our Deputy Mayor, Joe Mosca. We have our council member, Kelly Hinsey, who just had a baby under a month ago, her new baby, Lakey. Uh, we would like to welcome her to the family, so she, they, they are not here tonight, but we'll, we'll say thank you to Kelly anyway. And we have council member Tony Kranz right here. He's been on the council 10 years. Thank you, Tony. And we have council member Joy Lines right over here representing District 3, which includes Cardiff. I am honored to have worked alongside each of you for the betterment of our city, and I am so proud of the work we've achieved together. So with my fellow council members, I also want to take a moment to thank the city's excellent staff because the staff truly exemplify what public service is and should be. So first, let's start with our city manager, Pam Antill. Our assistant city manager, Jennifer Campbell. Our fire chief, Mike Stein, sitting right there. Thank you, Mike. We have our sheriff's captain for Encinitas, Captain Dustin Lopez. And we have the many heads of departments who are, were able to be with us tonight. So thank you to all the heads of departments that are running great teams in the city of Encinitas. Every day I am impressed by the dedication and determination of our city staff. They truly do all of the work day in and day out to actualize the goals of the city and we thank you so much for that. And so now I would like to recognize and express my gratitude for my wonderful family who joins me here tonight and has attended every one of my six State of the City addresses. So I am eternally grateful for the pride and support of my husband, Jeremy Blakespear, and my, stand up honey, and my two kids, our two kids, Ava and Oliver Blakespear. I'm also very blessed to have both of my parents here tonight, my dad, John Blake, and my mother, Tricia Smith. And I have my sister in town from Portland, Victoria Blake, and her daughter, Arrow. <laughs> and I have my aunt, Rosemary Kimball, and my uncle, Raymond Elstead, as well. Stand up and wave. So our family has been here for, for 100 years. Um, I am fourth generation, our kids are fifth generation, and it's tremendous, I have tremendous pride in knowing that they're all here to support me and that we have these really deep roots in the community. So thank you for your love and encouragement. I really could not do this work without your support, so thank you. So it's hard to believe that this is my final state of the city speech, um, because when I reflect back on eight years in office, two on the Encinitas City Council and six as the Encinitas Mayor, what I'm most proud of is that our city has taken bold action. The city of Encinitas has really led the way, and the city has shown itself to be a countywide innovator and a model for other cities across San Diego County. This has positively affected the lives of our residents and has also set our city up for future prosperity. And one reason I've really enjoyed this State of the City event each year is that it allows the opportunity to pause and to take some inventory of what's happened over the last year and to use that framework then to evaluate the future. 
Because without the state of the city, it could be easy to move from project to project and priority to priority without pausing to note the gravity of the milestones that we've completed. So for the, city, for, for the city of Encinitas, 2022 is marked with many positive achievements. I see the city's role as being more than just being a facilitator. So the city is more than just making the trains run on time, the buses run on time, although we do that too. But our work really is to organize community organizations, our colleagues, our professional staff, and the business community to identify and tackle problems and then to achieve goals. So residents don't want us to just celebrate the city's ambitions. They want us to celebrate achievements. And tonight we're here to do that. So the very first achievement, which is a major achievement that I'm so thrilled about, is that the City Council is highlighting Lucadia Streetscape Project, which is on the screen right here, right now. You can see, and it's complimentary project, the El Portal Railroad Undercrossing. So these are the city's two most major projects in the past year, and they were many, many years in the making. This hotel where we sit here tonight is on the far northern end of the Lucadia Streetscape Project as it continues to make its way north. So while this project was a major goal of the city when I was first elected, one of my first meetings was with Lucadia 101, and they said, what are you going to do about Lucadia Streetscape? And I said, what's that? I had, was a new candidate, hadn't heard of it. And they educated me and continued to advocate and advocate. It took the dedicated persistence of the Lucadia Main Street Association and many individual people and the political will of the city council to push through adversity and to prioritize this construction. So every time I ride down this stretch of 101 on my bike, or even when I was driving here tonight for this event, I marvel at the transformative power of a city infrastructure project. We have reconnected a community that was disconnected by a railroad track, and we have recreated positive public space for gathering and for traveling where an overlooked and increasingly run-down highway used to be. Let's give a big round of applause for Lucadia Streetscape. <laughs> and just recently, we cut the ribbon. You can see the photo here. Um, these were two distinct projects, uh, the El Portal Undercross and Lucadia Streetscape. But they were orchestrated together to minimize impacts to the community during construction. So now residents, guests, and businesses have the benefit of this easy east to west travel under the El Portal crossing that's shown right here, as well as 21 net new parking spaces and 33 new bike racks and additional trees in our urban canopy. So we have created spaces for casual gathering with new benches and tables and seats. And all of this was crafted from the reclaimed wood from the eucalyptus trees that had unfortunately grown diseased and they had to be removed from the project area. But this is truly a transformative project. And we have the community advocacy, the political leadership, the technical know-how from the city staff and SANDAG, and a state grant to thank for this project. So rising up just one level, transportation projects in general have truly been the hallmark of the last several years at the city of Encinitas. And these projects, ultimately, what are they really about? They're really about people. They're transportation projects, but they're really about people. Because they're about creating and recreating a built environment where people of all ages and abilities can be outside, can get where they need to go to live their lives, can recreate, can travel to work, can take their kids to school, visit our beautiful beaches, and to travel with as little stress as possible, whether that's outside or in a car. And with new trails like this coastal rail trail that we opened a few years ago in Cardiff, or the trail that we just opened in Alevenheim last week, and with our new roundabouts and railroad crossings, we are continually reinvesting in the creation of the city's infrastructure. As we plan for more railroad crossings toward La Costa Avenue, which is right here where we are, and the northern section of this coastal rail trail gets designed and built, I'm appreciative of how much progress we've made, but then also how much there still is to do. There's always so much more to do. So one other transportation project, this is really a once in a generation scale project that was completed in Encinitas last year. And this was not actually built by the city. It was built by the state agency of Caltrans and the county's transportation agency of Sandag, where I'm privileged to serve as the chair of its board of directors. 
And this project was truly, is truly monumental. It added another lane on the freeway in both directions. There is a brand new bridge over the San Alijo Lagoon that you can see in this photo. There are bike lane underpasses of the freeway at Santa Fe Drive and Encinitas Boulevard. There was a full ecologic lagoon restoration project and new biking and walking paths that connect Solana Beach to two parts of Cardiff, to Manchester and also to Birmingham. This is truly a stunning and monumental project and it's worth recognizing. If you haven't been there to see this bridge, to travel across the lagoon in this, underneath this bridge, I highly recommend that you get out there on bike or walk at the very next chance you get. Because projects this big and transformative, they just don't happen in any city very frequently, and they definitely don't happen in Encinitas very frequently. So it's worth recognizing this was a huge investment, and we were so lucky to get it. So before I move off of transportation projects, I want to note how excited I am about City Hall's first electric vehicle charging station that's open to the public. So with the state's am very ambitious decision to limit the yearly sale of new gas-powered cars to fight climate change, we know that there will be a huge demand for e-charging of cars. I see the city as being prescient in us setting aside space at our city hall parking lot to be part of the solution. In order to move off of our dependency on oil, we need more charging stations to power our electric vehicles. In the spring, we adopted an electric vehicle charging station master plan. This is the city's first. And it's to help encourage ownership of electric vehicles by Encinitas residents. This is a complement to the policy that we approved in 2019 that required new development, both commercial and residential, to include capacity for charging station installations. This is a proactive approach that is really the best way to promote environmentally responsible choices. So it makes it easy for the community to make those choices. We want to peel back the hurdles and the inconveniences so it's easier for people to make sustainable choices and to adopt those long-term shifts and habits. One legacy project that I'm totally thrilled by and want to highlight next is that the City Council this year dedicated the funds to tackle the rehabilitation of the former Pacific View Elementary School. This school, and this, the, the photo doesn't do it justice to see the whole sc uh, school, but you can see just the, the very front of it. This is one of the few public school sites in Southern California that remains standing not just west of I-5, but it's west of Highway 101. It is literally right next to the bluff, right next to the ocean. The historical and cultural importance of this former school site is undeniable to generations of Encinitas residents. Even today when I was coming here to check on the speech and make sure everything was, was ready for tonight, I was introduced to a new city staff member who went to Pacific View. And that was the very first thing they told me, was he, came, he went to Pacific View and he knows all about the city. And you know, Pacific View has really a deep heartbeat in this city. Um, and so we're so excited that we were able to purchase this in 2014, this property and this former school site. And then a great deal of time and effort from many community members went into trying to set a course for the next era of this space. And so here we, here we are, here we were when we were allocating the city's finances for the year, and the city council allocated $7 million to transform this increasingly dilapidated looking school site into a cultural arts center that will become an integral part of our community's fabric. So there should be a shovel in the ground by the beginning of 2023. Pacific View is actually, yes, thank you. That, that's a, a few, four, five months away. And Pacific View is actually the only item on our agenda for this council meeting that's coming up this Wednesday. So if you are interested in this, certainly tune into it or come to the council meeting. So it's also expected to be open by the summer of 2024 to welcome residents and visitors. This shows, this project shows our commitment to the arts. And it's also to, the, to community building, which is really what arts are, it's community building. And while this project doesn't involve roundabouts and bike lanes, it will help move generations of art fans and will spark new community connections. So I want to, I want to recognize that the city was able to allocate this type of funding for this one-time project because of the stimulus money that the federal government provided as part of pandemic relief. So we should really say thank you, Congress and President Biden. <laughs> Oh, okay. 
Good thing. Councilmember Kranz is reminding me that the Pacific View meeting is on the 6th of September, Tuesday, not Wednesday. So mark your calendars for a special meeting on Tuesday about Pacific View. Thank you. So now moving into the regulatory realm, Encinitas is the first city in San Diego County to enroll customers in an electricity plan that provides them with 100% renewable energy as the default option. So our new energy pro provider is San Diego Community Power, and it is chaired by our very own Deputy Mayor, Joe Mosca, right here. And this organization is really blazing a trail for a cleaner electricity grid. And this is critical in our collective effort to avoid the worst effects of climate change. Every electricity customer in Encinitas is automatically enrolled in a program that is sourced with completely green and clean energy. And what that means is that customers must opt into dirtier energy, not the other way around. So the default is so important, and I'm so proud of the City Council for making that decision. Next, I want to highlight the support of our, this is our safe parking program. So supporting our neighbors who are unhoused is another area where we are leading with the continuation of our safe parking program. A couple of years ago, the City Council determined that it was time for us to take more action to assist our unsheltered neighbors. And thanks to the social services that are provided by Jewish Family Service, we have created a place where individuals and families, many of whom are experiencing homelessness for the first time, can safely spend the night in their car while they begin bridging their way back into permanent housing with the support of the social workers that come to them at the parking lot. So in June, the City Council approved a three-year extension of the program at its new location in the parking lot of the Encinitas Community and Senior Center. This extension and the more permanent site selection proves that Encinitas is committed to helping people. And we are so grateful to the Leech Tag Foundation for stepping forward to host this site at the inception of the program. I truly believe that it was their decision to host it initially that laid the groundwork for our decision to say yes to hosting it at our city site. The program's data has shown a clear positive track record of helping people while having no negative community effect. The willingness to govern from a commitment to compassion is part of the soul of the city, and I'm very proud of our safe parking program. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now on to our most difficult topic in the city of Encinitas, housing. So this is the most difficult ongoing conversation I think we have, and it has been ongoing for the, uh, the entirety of my term in public service, and I think that when I talk to people who served before me, they say it's like Groundhog Day. They say it's the same conversations, and they see that things are very similar to the way they were many, many years ago. So now, at this moment, finally, the city of Encinitas has a state-approved housing plan. <laughs> That's the first step. So we have prudently resolved years of housing-related lawsuits and what felt like an ongoing regulatory purgatory with the state. So it is worth noting that the housing element update, this housing plan that we passed, has resulted in 334 new affordable housing units that are already built or currently being built in Encinitas. And this housing would not have been built otherwise. That's 334 units that are affordable. So let's recognize that that is new, new housing that helps people. I foresee that this city will continue to struggle with finding places to add both affordable and market rate housing. And this is important work that deserves our ongoing commitment. So sometimes we talk passionately about inclusion and sustainability and diversity, but these concepts, they are all implicated in our collective decision making about whether to provide more homes, especially homes that are affordable for people who, who earn less than $150,000 a year. So before my time in elected office, the El Camino Real Corridor had been the focus of some planning efforts that became bogged down in controversy, similar to the housing controversies that I described before, basically the same controversies. Um, 
And so when it came time for us to move forward with creating an El Camino Real specific plan this year, we decided to work very hard at the outset to involve as many community voices as possible. So we are seeking to revitalize and reinvest in this critical corridor of our city. Our aim is to blend commercial, residential, and community building spaces together in a manner that addresses our current needs, allows room for future growth, and ultimately enhances the Encinitas that we appreciate so deeply. So that's why your comments and your survey responses are an integral part of that planning process. I encourage as much engagement as possible. Housing is complicated, and that seems to be especially the case here in Encinitas. And what that means is that we get to be more resourceful and more thoughtful about how we approach the challenge. The best solution for Encinitas long-term housing and the revitalization of the El Camino Real Corridor is gonna come down to all of us working together, talking together, figuring it out together. And we really owe it to our retirees, to our young families who wanna move back here to the place they grew up, to our teachers, to our medical professionals, to our hospitality staff, to first responders, among many, many others to do so. So speaking of our first responders, Encinitas continues to be one of the safest communities in the county and the state. We owe a big thanks to the tireless efforts and talents of our fire and marine safety and sheriff's department teams. So let's say another good big thank you. In March, SafeWise ranked Encinitas as one of the 30 safest cities in the state of California. Our Encinitas Fire Department responded to 4,699 incidents, and it took our crews an average of just six minutes and 36 seconds to arrive at the scene of an incident from the time a 911 call was placed. Our emergency and safety personnel are working every day to ensure that our community of residents, businesses, and guests can enjoy their days without worry. And it's really that sense of security that is the often untold underpinning of Encinitas' high quality of life. This year, our water district, San Diego Water District, celebrated its 100th year of service to Encinitas. The water district has been in existence for 65 years longer than the city has been incorporated. So we incorporated in 1986. And that signals how vital water is to forming and perpetuating our community. We know we couldn't exist without it, and we know that the limited water supply in this arid part of the country is a top issue that's on many people's minds. Ensuring a sustainable water supply for Encinitas and surrounding communities will continue to be a top priority. And the solutions are really multifactorial. They include policies that direct treated and recycled water back into communities instead of into the ocean. It involves removing brine from seawater, making wise decisions about sustaining and replenishing the water table and groundwater, and better management and reuse of storm water. It's always struck me as ironic that we periodically have flooding problems in Lucadia because we are overwhelmed by the amount of water that comes down from the sky. But then we also face crippling historic drought conditions. So together we remain committed to finding solutions that will ensure our water reliability. So speaking of water and that big body of water that we are so blessed to live alongside, as a beach community, environmental stewardship is everyone's top consideration when making decisions about Encinitas. We know that our coastline is our community's treasure, and it's up to us to keep it that way. Recently, we had instability at the bluffs at Beacons Beach. This, is, this shows Beacons, for those of you who might not know that beach, that iconic beach. And this shows the access to some of our most beloved activities and locations, and it really hinges on cooperation from Mother Nature, being able to access the beach. Environmental engineers from the city and from Scripps Institute of Oceanography are continuing to monitor any seismic movement of the bluffs to ensure the safety of beachgoers and homes in the area. I know we're all happy that access to Beacons Beach down this beloved seaside trail has been restored after it was deemed safe again by experts. And one final topic of importance is the management of our waste stream. So waste is really a resource, whether that's wastewater that can be treated and reused to water plants, or food scraps that can be turned into compost. The city has recently begun collecting food and yard waste in one bin and taking it to a digester for processing. 
Organic waste makes up 40% of the waste stream in our landfills, and we are blessed to have a forward-thinking waste hauler in EDCO who pursued a solution to this by constructing a digester that can convert all of our green waste and our food materials into natural gas and fertilizer. Edco is a family-owned company, and they've been our waste hauler the entire time I've been in office, and I'm very grateful that we have them. You know, you may read news articles about trash piling up on the streets of other cities, and that obviously would be a very unfortunate circumstance. So I'm happy that we don't have those problems here, and also that Edco invested in this digester so many years ago going through the permitting so we could be where we are today with green waste. This year, we also took the Environmental Commission's recommendation to ban helium balloons, which foul our waterways and our backcountry when they ultimately fall down from the sky. So I want to thank everybody for embracing small changes in habits. So it takes a little bit of a change in habit to put your food waste into the green bin instead of the trash, and to make conscious decisions about reducing purchasing of single-use plastics, such as balloons and disposable water bottles for celebrations. Acting together, we can all live more sustainably with our individual choices. Encinitas is a city that nearly everyone I speak with praises as the ideal community. And I hear that from people who are in Encinitas, people who are in Sacramento, people who are in downtown San Diego. I hear how amazing Encinitas is. And, and it always warms my heart, of course, to have people tell me this. And I know it. It's because we have gorgeous natural coastal environments. We have this creative community of business people and artists. And we've taken bold and cutting edge actions to keep our environment clean. My sincere hope is that when my term as mayor expires and the new mayor and council and the next generation of local community leaders fill these seats, we all sit in these seats for such a short time. My hope is that they feel as emboldened as we have to stand up and to meet the challenges of the moment. Because it goes without saying that controversy follows bold action. But when you see the problems that get fixed and you see people's lives improved, the pain of living through that controversy is worth it. And there's always so much more to do. My fervent hope is that the forward momentum that we have created together as proud Encinitans continues to build as a result of our fearless actions and our hard-earned and well, well fought for reputation as a city that is poised for the future and remains ready to lead. So this opportunity to shape our community with input from you has been a true honor. I appreciate deeply the trust that you have placed in me to protect and advance our Encinitas. And I thank you for joining me tonight, for joining the Chamber of Commerce and the city of Encinitas. And I hope you have a great rest of your evening.